so so kind to me. Hello friends, and welcome to another weekend with Foxhole Ministries. At the end of the month, we offer baptisms to our downtown friends who want to make a declaration of change in their lives. We give God praise knowing that hell has lost another one and they are eternally free from their sins. We want to thank you for your continued prayers and financial support. God bless you and have a great day. before you in gratitude to spend every Saturday with our Foxhole family. Lord, you enrich us every week, every message that you give us, every heart that you turn towards you, you soften our hearts more and more to let us show the compassion, the mercy, and the grace that you give us so freely. Father, we are grateful this morning for the sun shining, for the coffee we had, the iced tea, <coughs> the conversations, the fellowship. I'm grateful for my brother Rob for his heart in this, to give us church every Saturday. Thank you to the volunteers. We praise you. We praise you and we bless your name, Lord. Continue just working in our lives. Let the message today just sit with us. Let it marinate throughout the week. Let us chew on this message. Not just receive it as milk, but to chew on it as food, food for the week, food for the days to come, food to disciple others on the streets that don't know your name that we can be a helping hand to. Let our brothers and sisters come together on these streets, preaching the good word, the name. Let us be the apostles that you call us to be. We are all the same, one and the same. No matter what we do for a living, we are all the same. My brothers and sisters are just like me. They're funny. They have mercy. They have compassion. They share the same sadness. And I'm so grateful that they've been praying for Gerald and I, praying for our daughter Sam. It warms my heart that my family out here thinks of me and prays for me, that they would be so gracious to pray for me. Father, we bless this message today in your name. Use Rob as your vessel. Give him words of wisdom upon his shoulders. Reveal the kingdom secrets to him so that it may be re revealed to us. Lord, we thank you for this daily bread, for this living water that flows so freely in us. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray and we give all the glory. Amen. Thank you, Casey. It's awesome. All right, so we're uh, we're still going through the, the Gospel of John, um, guys. Uh, we we went through the first half half of uh, chapter fourteen uh, last week, and and um, plan is to go through the the second half of chapter fourteen today. Um, I don't know if we're going to get there or not. It, um, honestly, we. Um, yeah, we, we will get there. We will ultimately get there, David. Um, I don't know. I'm uh, a, a, and uh, maybe you guys can help me out with this. Um, I I feel a heaviness in this city right now. You know, I in I feel a heaviness in this country right now, and and I think a lot of it has to do with with um, the contention over this election that's coming up you know um and i know that um there was a song when i was growing up by y'all y'all know the group alabama alabama yeah yeah they were like a super group super country group right and 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 they had this they had this song called uh, walking in high cotton anybody remember that and there's a line in there that says um Somebody told us the stock market fell, 
but we were so poor we couldn't tell, right? <laughs> like some things just don't have an impact on you because you don't live in that world, right? But it affects us all, right? It affect that when when there's so much animosity in the world, it affects us at every level because a, a evil just has a it has a place to breed, you know, and it just feeds on the anger uh, and everything that we've that we've got going on. And um, I, now this this book tells us that we're outside of that, that we operate outside of that. Right. That that we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Yeah. But that that's a little hard to get hold of sometimes. Right. Because you're in the world, you know. Amen. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, right, David. The Bible the Bible tells us that we see him in all creation. In, 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 in yeah, we see him in all creation and and um yeah. But um but he uses us, right? He uses us to be a witness to who he is. And I guess this doesn't have anything to do with what I'm going to talk about today. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Um, but I guess it's just to encourage you to, um, regardless of your circumstances or where you're at, is is to just be a witness out there. Be kind. Just be kind to each other. Um, try to rise above any of the of the hate um, and, and, and the evil that, that goes on in the world because at the heart of it, um, the world can tell us all day long that we don't like each other because of skin color or because of how we believe or or what we go. Uh, but that that doesn't happen. That's not the reality here. Right. It's not it's not what happens in in our our world here. Right. It's this is supposed to be a sanctuary and we should carry that with us wherever we go and shine that light in in every way in 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 every every opportunity that we can amen amen yeah so i um once again my uh, i i just got a heavy heart um for that and and so i'm just gonna talk to you today we're just gonna talk we're gonna look at uh, look at some scripture and look at some things going on but uh is it okay if we just like do this without do this without expectation today, right? A, a, that our only expectation is that God speaks something into us that brings us brings us life, that brings us closer to Him. Amen. Huh? Yeah, He starts off chapter fourteen with "Let not your heart be troubled." Right? Believe in God. Believe also in me. Right? That we we have to remember that this that that this life that we go through this. This thing that we're we're experiencing right now is a is a blip in eternity. It's a tiny parenthesis in eternity. We we started in the heart and mind of God, and we will finish for all eternity with Him. Um, and so this period of time that we have to go through right here is uh, is nothing compared. It, the Bible tells us it's nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed in us when we're with him. Amen. Uh, so I guess that kind of lends to to where I uh, I want to start off today. And and it's not not going to be in John 14. I. Um, um, John, I, I and let me let me explain that. John 14 introduces us to. Uh, Jesus is introducing us to, um, or introducing the disciples to the fact that he is going to come again in spirit, by the Holy Spirit, by his spirit to live inside of us. Once he completes his mis uh, mission on the earth, dying on the cross and being uh, and and being resurrected from the dead and he he brings us with him and that that act that he does whether we understand it completely or not you know, we try to that's why we do what we're doing right but um that prepares us for him to live inside of us you know and i uh, and i thought as i went through that is that um sometimes we have to go back to foundational principles um 
to understand how we even get there, get to a point where we start to understand um, where we have to be to come to a saving faith in him so that he can live inside of us. Am I talking in circles? Maybe. David said, yes, you are. (laughs) I love it. All right. So uh, I'm going to read a passage here, and then we're just we're just going to see how it goes. I, I've got a, a couple of sections that I want to touch on. But um, the Apostle Peter, in, uh, in his first letter, 1 Peter, um, fourth chapter, uh, verse 12, he says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you. Y'all follow me? Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you. As though something strange were happening in your life. But rejoice inasmuch as you participate in the sufferings of Christ. So that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. Y'all catch all that? He said, don't be surprised that life's tough. Don't be surprised that bad things happen. It's a broken world, you know, and uh, and Jesus came here to fix it one heart at a time. And it's our agreement with him that begins to fix this world. Ultimately, he's going to roll this world back and he's he's going to create a new world right the way that he intended it from the beginning but while we're in it right now he's saying stuff's gonna happen that sucks that that just doesn't make sense sometimes tragedy is gonna happen uh joel gave me an opportunity this morning his kids and his uh, his um, son's basketball team came down and they're serving lunches out there and he wanted me to go and tell him the story of how we started down here. Um, and specifically, um, a lot of you guys know this, but some of you may not. Um, specifically, um, what what happened for us to be introduced to this place and be able to start this this church service on a Saturday morning. And, th- and that event that happened was the death of my grandson my 26 month old grandson um he he had a, a congenital heart defect and he'd had a bunch of surgeries um throughout his life and um and he ultimately they couldn't fix it and and so he passed away and um my son and my daughter-in-law um they wanted to to honor his life, and so they had come down here to serve lunches. Now, they had an opportunity to come down and serve lunches. This is three years ago. And um, and so they came down here, and they, uh, through some weird circumstances, they ended up at the wrong place. They were supposed, supposed to be a cub. Y'all know cub, right? And they ended up over here. They got lost. They ended up over here. And um, long story short, um, there was a, uh, they found out that there was a, kids bible drive because it was right before christmas right about this time um and uh he asked me if our men's group would want to be involved in doing that and so that's how we were introduced to this place within a couple of months we they gave us an opportunity to do a little bible study on saturday morning in there and you guys flocked in a bunch of y'all flocked in and and we outgrew that real quick and we had to move outside under tents right and 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 now we do this three times a week in three different places to folks just like you um, we bring the word of God. We bring Jesus, right? So it's out of that. Uh, thank you. Um, that it's out of that tragedy, right? That that God births something beautiful. So we don't always understand it, right? We don't always understand why bad things happen, but God says He works everything together for the good, right? And and so He can take those things that are happening in our life that break us. Um, and, and, and many times there are things that we, that are self-inflicted wounds, right? We do those things to ourselves and we put ourselves in positions that, that, um, that 
cause bad things to happen in our life, right? Um, and those things break us because of the consequences of them, right? And the things that happen. And so I want to talk about that today because that's the foundation. I, I will tell you this. I can't, I can't find a single example in Scripture where someone came to a saving knowledge of Christ without being broken. Yo, I know that's not comfortable, right? That's not my usual stick. <laughs> you know, I, I, lo I like to tell you how much Jesus loves you, and he does. What's up, brother? I'm sorry? Re repeat that. Repeat what I was saying. I said I can't think of a single instance in Scripture where someone came to a saving knowledge of Christ without being broken, without having some breaking going on in your life. And Peter's telling us here that we should rejoice in that breaking because it's that breaking of who we are that reveals his goodness. Amen? Right? And like I said, sometimes it's self-inflicted, right? Many times it is. And we're going to read a, a story, or I'm going to tell you a story about one of those times um, when a, a good man did a bad thing. And there was a cost. And there was a breaking that came from it, right? Um, and... We're mainly going to concentrate on the prayer that he made as he was coming out of that bre breaking or when he was reconciling that breaking in him, right? Amen? Uh, I, I've talked about this before, but it's been a couple of years. And the beauty of our church down here um, is that there's very few of you that were here three years ago that when we started, Right? Praise God that this is a transient congregation, that, that the folks that we started off with aren't out here anymore. Now, some, some still come down and come to church, and we see them at other places, right? Um, but I, I'd like to think that this has a little something to do with people getting up and out of here, right? Because we have seen a lot of change. We probably, we've probably ministered to and been in relationship with six or 700 people over the last three years down here. But it's been different faces because folks find a way to get up and get out. Amen? Amen. All right. Okay, so um, I'll stop babbling and get into it. Um, in, uh, in the book of 2 Samuel, and I'm not going to go to it. I'm just going to tell you the story. Um, in the book of 2 Samuel, there's, um, there's a man named King, King David. You guys know King David? Anybody know King David? All right. Uh, David was a man called of God, set apart by God, anointed by God to be king of the nation of Israel. And he had a great, God had a great purpose for him, and it was to unify the tribes of Israel into one nation under God to be a witness to the rest of the world. Right? The nation of Israel had never been unified. They fought together. Sometimes they fought with each other, right? Uh, kind of like what our nation is right now. When, uh, when we're all hit from the outside, we kind of come together. <laughs> uh, when, uh, when, we, when, we, when we're not hit from the outside and things are kind of cool, we, we fight with each other, <laughs> right? <laughs> we get bored. So, uh, so anyway, yeah, that was an unexpected connection. Um, so anyway, uh, so David, uh, has gone through a lot of trials and tribulations in his life. The guy that was king before, uh, he tried to serve him and be good and be a friend to him and honor him as king. Um, and, uh, this guy was just consistently jealous and consistently trying to kill him. So he chased him through, uh, the desert and all over Israel and through other nations for, for a couple of decades. All right, he had to hide in caves and, 
and didn't have any security or any safety for a lot of years until that king was killed and David was put in to that position as king. And the Bible tells us that David was a, a man after God's own heart. He, that he, he loved God. He wanted to serve God. He, um, he had a heart for God. Um, he, y'all know the book of Psalms? Psalm, the, the book of Psalms is the longest book in the Bible. It has 150 chapters in it. Um, and 78 of those songs, those songs of worship and praise and lament, David wrote those, right? David was a, David was a worshiper of God. He honored God. But in this particular instance, as David had been king for a while, um, and things were really good, and the nation of Israel was together, and they were prospering, and they were becoming wealthy, and they were winning all of their battles against their adversaries and so forth, David got complacent. Right? And, and uh, I, I'll tell you, like, it's not always a good place to be to be to have everything that you want, right? Where, you, where you're not striving for anything. Amen? I, I'll tell you in my life, the closest I have felt to God in my entire life, the times when I have felt the closest to God, I've had the most communion with God, is when I've had the least. When uh, everything's been taken away. When I've lost it all. When I'm locked up. And there's nowhere else to go. Right? God is not the author of evil. Amen? But God will allow us to be in positions to where we don't have any other choice but to reach our hand up to him and say, I need help. I don't have anything left. I, I'm helpless without you. Amen. But that's not where David was. David was in a position where things were pretty cool. You know, there was relative peace in his world and a lot of prosperity. And the Bible tells us that it was the it, that it was the time of year. This is weird to me, but it, it says it, it was the time of year when kings went out to war. It's like they scheduled it right every year in March. They just go out to war. Right. Uh, the Bible tells us that it was the time for them to go out to war. And David decided he was going to stay home. He was going to hang out in Jerusalem in his palace. And his men would go out and fight the war. You know, little reward. You know, stay home. Stop, stop battling. Things are good. I've, they, and I'll tell you what gets us there is we start thinking, I deserve something. You know, I uh, I, I've done a good job. I've worked really hard. I, I've been pouring myself into this. You know, I need an attaboy. So I'm going to stay home. I'm going to hang out. All right. So that's what he did. Stayed home. No accountability. Nobody around him. No, no men to keep him in line. Right. That's why we are with each other. That's why we talk to each other. So we can keep each other straight. Right. That's why God says surround yourself with people that believe like you, act like uh, that, that seek after me so that you can keep each other accountable, right? Well, G David didn't have anybody that he was accountable to. And it says he walked out onto his porch and he saw a woman bathing in a building across the way, right? And it said he, he liked the way she looked. And so he inquired as to who that woman was and found out that it was the wife of one of his generals, one of his, um, one of his top fighting men, a guy named Uriah. He didn't let that deter him. He sent some of his folks over there to get that woman. 
because his desire for his own self-interest superseded anything that was going to hurt or harm anybody else, right? And so he got her and brought her, they had brought her to the palace and he slept with her. Um, yeah, he had sex with her. Yeah, yeah, right? Man after God's own heart. And she got pregnant. And so now he's in a fix, right? Because her husband's off at war. People are going to ask questions. How'd she get pregnant? So he sends to his top general and says, I want you to send Uriah home. Tell him he needs to bring a message back to me. Because his thought was, if I bring this guy home, then he'll get here, he'll sleep with his wife, and everybody will think that's his baby. Okay? Right? So Uriah came home, and Uriah delivered the message. But Uriah said, I will not go in to my house and sleep with my wife while my friends are dying out there. So he slept on the front porch, okay? Wouldn't go in. So now David's in a real fix. Again, it's going to become known that she's pregnant, and everybody's going to know Uriah didn't do it. And it's going to come back to him. So when he sends Uriah back to the front line, he sends a message with Uriah to, the, to his general. He says, don't read this message, but take it to the general. Give it to him. It's for his eyes only. And that message says, put Uriah at the front of the battle. Put him out there in the front. And what that meant was Uriah was going to be in a position where he was going to be killed. And that's what happened. Uriah was killed. Amen? Right? And so now David could foster the lie that Uriah had slept with his wife and get away with it, he thought. Right? But a prophet of God, the prophet of God that that the nation of Israel was under that time, a man named Nathan came to David with a word from the Lord that said, I know what you did. I know what you did. And there's going to be consequences to this, right? There's consequences to this action. And so the child that was born from that union, that adultery, and that murder, the child that was the product of that died. David prayed earnestly that he wouldn't die, but he died. Amen? Yeah, yeah. So... Um, and we say, oh, well, God took something from him. He did something bad. God took something from him. Um, yeah. That, that's not the moral of the story. The, the moral is how did David react to what went on, right? Because our tendency sometimes is to is to just be mad at God. To not recognize what we've done to bring ourselves to that point or to be in that position. Um, to, to just stay in rebellion and say God's mean, right? But that's not how David reacted. Um, and that comes to, uh, that, that brings us to the heart of what I want to say today is how... When we realize how far away from God that we are, how separate from the God, the Father who loves us that we are, how are we going to react? Are we going to continue in our rebellion and shaking our fists? Or are we going to humble ourselves and, and say, I need you, Lord. I I, I 
I, I need you, right? Um, so anyway, I'm going to read what, uh, um, what, what, David, what David said here. Um, and again, we'll just see where it goes. I'm not going to talk a long time today. Just this is what's on my heart right now. So, so David, in Psalm chapter, uh, chapter 51, it says that he wrote this for the director of music. It's a psalm of David. When the prophet Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery and murder with Bathsheba. Amen? Yeah. So David starts off, he says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. He, David knew he had done wrong, and, but he knew that God was solid and good. Right? And he said, I... I can't wrap my, he's saying, I can't wrap my mind around why you would take me back after this. But I know that your mercy and your unfailing love is greater than my failure. Amen? He says, um, blot out my transgressions. Uh, listen, this one, the one sentence here has three parts he says blot out my transgressions wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin that word blot out there is the same word um, that the bible uses when it talks about the flood noah's flood when when god blotted out all humanity and started over so he could save us Save humanity, right? It, it, it means to make it as if it never was. Blot out my iniquity. Wipe it out from your memory. And I want us to understand the emotion of David here, right? He's saying, if you can't, if I don't know that you can completely wipe this away from your memory... I don't know that I can face you. I don't know that I can be in your presence if this is going to be on your mind when you look at me. Right? I know that my sin and what I've done and how I've acted is so deeply offensive that I don't know that I could, if I could ever come back to you if you can't wipe this out. And that word iniquity is my rebellion, my revolt against you. That everything I knew that was good, I trashed it, I threw it away, and I stomped on it. I ran away from you, and I need you to forget that. And God tells us that's exactly what he does, that he wipes it from his memory. He doesn't say he wipes it from our memory. Amen? But he wipes it from his. He says, wash away all my iniquity. And that word, wash away, um, some translations say thoroughly wash or aggressively wash. It's, um, it's like a commercial washing machine or uh, the way that Dan washed clothes whenever he was growing up on a washboard. <laughs> Dan said, don't talk about me. <laughs> hey, no, it, he's saying... I need you to purify me. I need you to I, I, I need you to cleanse me. I need you to I need you to wipe away from your memory what I've done, but then I need you to do something in me that makes me know that I 
can come back and approach you. Amen? So he says, wash away all my iniquity. And, and it, iniquity is the way that I have perverted and distorted your goodness. David is supposed to be the representation of God on earth. And he's saying, look, I need you to wash me and, and to, so that I can c continue to be an example and an image of you. I need to be washed that kind of way, right? I need to, you to change my distorted mind. Amen? And finally, he says, and cleanse me from my sin. And the word cleanse here is a ceremonial cleansing. We've talked about this out here before. Ceremonial cleansing is when God does something to prepare us to receive him back inside of us. And, and the word sin there is karta, which means the same thing as the Greek word harmarteo. It means the separation from God or the missing the mark, right? So I need you to clean me up so you can live back in me again so that I can be, you can, you can be, I can, we can be part of each other again so that I am not separate from you. Amen? I know I took a long time on that, but that's the foundation of what, what David is crying out. He is broken. And, and he's not, this isn't, this isn't a cry of, uh, um, I acted stupid, don't make me have to pay the consequences. The consequences have already been paid. Somebody died. A child died. A son died. Right? Do you get the connection there? Jesus died for us. The payment was already made. But something has to happen in us. A brokenness has to happen in us to receive that sacrifice. Amen? We, ha we have to realize why we need him. And when Peter's telling us there in, in his letter, we need to join Christ in his suffering. Right? It's, it's the understanding and the realization that he was broken for us. That he took that for us. And that should break us. I, I noticed the parallels, and I'm not, I, I don't think I'm going to have time to do it today. Guys. But, but do, do, if we don't have time, I want you guys to do this. I want you to take Psalm 51, and I want you to put it up against Isaiah 53. Some of you guys are going to know what I'm talking about here. Isaiah 53 is the, is the prophecy that Isaiah made 800 years before Jesus died on the cross of Jesus, the graphic uh, um, prophecy of how Jesus was going to die on the cross. And what David is presenting here matches up with that, almost identically as it goes through. Amen? All right, hey, but, uh, but I'm going to move on. All right. <coughs> David says, for I know my transgression and my sin is always before me. Um, again, it's blotted out of the mind of God, but it's not blotted out of your mind. We remember who we were, and there's a reason for that. We can't ever forget what we used to be. We can't ever forget what brought us to the brokenness that, that made us realize that we have a God who loves us, right? But we don't ever want to repeat what we were. So he says, my sin and my transgression is always in front of my face. Now, that doesn't mean we go around flogging ourselves. The Bible tells us we don't live in condemnation. There's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, right? He doesn't want to walk, but he doesn't want us to forget what he brought us from. 
when he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, he was constantly calling them to remember, I brought you out of that. You don't want to go back to that. There's nothing good there. There's nothing for you there. Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Amen? Okay, so, so we say, well, no, you sinned against Bathsheba. You sinned against uh, Uriah. You killed him. You, you know, you took her. Uh, and, and, but, but David is speaking a truth here that we need to understand. Bad things are going to happen in this world. God will take care of that. Hey, Uriah is sitting with God. Right? David is acknowledging that his biggest sin is his separation from God and not fulfilling the purpose that God's got for him, right? A whole hell of a lot more people are going to be hurt by David staying separate from God than just one man, Uriah. As heinous as that crime was, if, if David doesn't move in back into a point of repentance and continue on with the purpose that God has for him, then a lot of people are going to be harmed by that. So my sin is against you and you only. Amen? All right. All right, I'm going to move faster. Are you all still with me? Okay. He says, um, so you are right. A against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And you're right in your verdict and you're justified when you judge me. All right? There's no excuse. For, for the way that I act. There's no excuse for what I do. And so when you judge me, you're right. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from, uh, sinful from the time my mother conceived me, yet you desired faithfulness even in my womb. Even in the womb, not my womb. I, newsflash, David didn't have a womb, okay? All right, so... Um, Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. God has called you from before the foundation of the world. He set you apart from the foundation of the world. You may not feel like you are. You, you may think, well, this, this, it doesn't feel right if that's the case, right? He made a mistake. You know, Roger told me yesterday, it sounds like God made a mistake. <laughs> right, Roger? <laughs> so, yep. So, he says, uh, cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter this, than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hear that, right? If you're going through a crushing, if you're going through a brokenness, if you have been brought to a point, whether it's by your own doing or, or circumstances of the world, hey, brother, let the bones that have been crushed rejoice. Because they're bringing you back to Jesus. Amen? Hide your, hide your face from my sins. Blot out all my iniquity. He's repeating what he's asked him to do. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Hey, whatever has caused me to go this, this way, that's caused me to flee from you, Take that heart out, put in a new heart, make it pure, and make it have a desire for you. Amen? Do not cast me from your presence and do not take your spirit from me. David knows that this is the worst possible thing that could happen, is the separation from God. That God removes his spirit from him. That he stays in his rebellion, that he doesn't repent, that he doesn't come back. And that he that that he operates through the rest of his life in his <coughs> separate from the spirit of Almighty God, right? There's only one way to life, and that is through the Spirit of God and allowing Him to live in you. You are not whole until you have the Spirit of God in you, right? We we are two part beings, and and and, and the other half of us is Almighty God. Amen. All right. He says, restore to me the joy of my salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Um, that, that, that may be the most important thing is, um, is that we can get 
um, and man, I find myself doing this all the time. We can get so religious and so caught up and and so um, so fervent in the things that we do that we don't have joy in this salvation. And if we don't have joy, if we don't have the joy of the Lord in us, if we're not consi- con- consistently and constantly reminded of the of His goodness and what He's done in our life and what He what His purpose is for us, then we can't share share it with any confidence amen Rejo- r- renew the joy of my salvation right renew r- restore a right spirit in with me uh, in me uh and, and uh, i'm sorry lost my place don't take your spirit from me restore the joy of my salvation then i will teach when I've do- when that happens, he says, then I will teach transgressors your way so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. You who are God, my Savior, and my tongue will sing your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God. I'm just going to close up with this, guys. I'm not going to uh, continue to uh, to try to make it any better than it is. He says, my sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. Amen. The foundation of our faith is our brokenness. The understanding that we can't get to him, there's no way, and there's uh, a, and and within us, there is no good thing, right? We don't get we don't get up, just like I've told you before. You don't get up in the morning to, uh, um, thinking I'm going to go create chaos, and we do that, right? But you don't you don't get up thinking you are, right? Um, you also uh, um, don't get up in the morning most of the times without the Spirit of God in you, uh, seeking what you can do good, right? <laughs> what you what you can do for somebody else. Um, when we understand how helpless we are, and we come to a point of brokenness, and the true understanding that he took the breaking for us, he took the beating for us, he took the death for us so that we could come to him. Uh, and all he's asking us to do is join, a, uh, join him in, th- in that. Um, I, 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 can't, I can't preach a message that will bring you to brokenness. I, I can't convince you of the need for our hearts to break for what he did for us. Amen. That that's something you got to find in yourself. Amen. All right guys, uh baptisms. Um we are we're set up and we're ready to go. Um we will get back into John 14 the next week. Jesus loves you. I want I I do want to end with that. Jesus loves you. He cherishes you. Uh, he has. Um, uh, he gives himself com- completely and gladly for you. Everything that he, the, everything that he's done, has been to get you to come home. Amen. Right. Come back to him in, in whatever way that you can. In what, uh, in w- wherever you find yourself, uh, turn to him, and he'll welcome you with open arms. Amen. He stands at the door and knocks. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, I thank you and praise you for uh, for your uh, spirit today, Lord, for uh, for joining us here. Lord, I ask that you do break our hearts for you. Break our hearts for what breaks yours. Lord, let us see see you in the fullness of your glory, in the fullness of your submission uh, to, uh, to our anger, uh, to our... Uh, debauchery, the things that that we do to hurt each other, Lord, that you submitted to all of that to show us how much you care for us and how much you want us back. 
Lord, we thank you and praise you for everything that you continue to do in our life. I ask, Lord, that you could, uh, that you surround my friends um, a, a, with a hedge of protection as they go through their week, and that you bring us back here, Lord, to worship once again. Uh, we thank you and praise you. Give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.